the root is one of the key organs that helps distinguish between a dicot and a monocot plant. Let's observe the transverse section of the matured zone of roots to understand their internal structure. We'll begin by studying the anatomy of a dicot root. The outermost single-layered tissue of the dicot root is called the epidermis. On the epidermis, you will also find some extended epidermal cells, which are unicellular root hairs. The epidermis is followed by cortex, which is formed of several layers of thin-walled parenchymatous cells. These cells have intercellular spaces. The innermost layer of the cortex comprises barrel-shaped cells without any intercellular spaces. This layer is known as the endodermis. The tangential and radial walls of the endodermal cells have deposits of a water impermeable material or suburin, which is also called Casparian strips. Suburin is a waxy waterproof substance present in the cell walls of the cork tissue in plants. Going back to the transverse section of the dicot root, after the endodermis, a few layers of thick-walled parenchymatous cells are present in the tissue. This is known as the pericycle. Secondary growth, such as initiation of lateral roots and vascular cambium, takes place in the cells of the pericycle. Notice that the pith in the tissue of the dicot root is extremely small and undeveloped. Typically, there are two to four xylem and phloem patches in a dicot root. In the later stages, a cambium ring gets formed between the xylem and the phloem. Some radially arranged parenchymatous cells are found between the vascular bundles. These cells form the conjunctive tissue, which is specialized for storage of water. The tissues present inside the endodermis, namely the pericycle, vascular bundles, and pith, are collectively known as steel. Let's now take a look at how the monocot root is organized internally. In many aspects, it is similar to the dicot root. On comparing the two roots, we find the monocot root also consists of the epidermis, cortex, endodermis, pericycle, vascular bundle, and pith. However, there are some differences. The monocot root can have many xylem bundles, whereas the dicot root does not have quite as many. Moreover, in a monocot root, the pith is well developed. Although dicot and monocot roots have some structural similarities, they differ in the number of xylem bundles and size of the pith and cortex. Moreover, secondary growth takes place only in the dicot root. In other words, these roots thicken over time.